All right, so I'm exhausted. It's Saturday morning. Uh, <clears throat> I was summoned to come down to Cranberry, although I didn't really feel like it. I do what God tells me to do 100% of the time. Now, if you've been following the videos that I've been making, you know well, well, well too far well, <laughs> you know pretty damn well, <laughs> that um, Angela is Latin and a universal name for angelic messenger of God, or heavenly messenger, or God's helper, heavenly whatever. And, you know, I started this journey without having any clue how tumultuous and painful and exhausting and rewarding that this was going to be to go through the life of Jesus Christ, you know, Holy Spirit manifests itself and I have felt the the weight of that cross. I have felt those crown of thorns and I have felt it. And Padre Pio said, I I have been crucified with Christ. And I don't think a lot of people are A even willing to do that or B they just don't listen as to how. I mean, who wants to suffer? You know what I mean? The emo movement and everybody comes out with this, uh, you know, this melancholy um, message. And I choose various forms of how I'm supposed to deliver the mess messages with gifts and different things to people that I'm never even going to probably know or see or hear about in my lifetime. Why? Because when I first started doing the drops. I never left any way for people to get a hold of me. And part of it was, and don't take this the wrong way, but part of it was God had always made me promise from the inception of his ministry with, with Jesus and I that I wouldn't bring people back to my home because A, I couldn't afford to, you know, clothe and feed and take care of, nor did I have the room to be able to take people in like Mother Teresa was able to do. Instead, I would go out into the communities and deliver toothbrushes and blankets and and somehow people always seemed to find the right thing. I remember one time I went to the Brown Bear Car Wash and James can testify about all the times I went there and I saw a homeless man wearing a pair of shoes that I had left. <laughs> that was to me like the most amazing thing that God could do to to literally show me that what I was doing was so significant to him. And so through those years, I thought to myself, well, when do I get to share all of this with the world? When's the whole globe going to know this message? And then the crosses on the forehead came along, and I found the scripture in Revelation 22.4 about how his children will look up and he will look down at them. And he will see his name written on their foreheads. I thought I was just going to get annihilated by posting a picture of me with a cross on my forehead. And through the graces of my father, knowing that I couldn't handle any more stress from people, nobody really said anything at all. And that made me very happy. So they got more elaborate and more beautiful. I got more ballsy and started going back out there and wearing the crosses again. I had stopped for a couple of years because of my sexual assault, always feeling like the reason that I was raped was because I had that cross on my forehead. And you know what? That's exactly why I was attacked. I became later a poster child for bipolar affect type 1. I went on to have a son who is the love of my life. I didn't ever want kids. You see, the last decade of my life has all built up to these final days for me, recording and running around and trying to show the world what it was like for Jesus. And my Father shines on me right now in glory. Because I show people the beautiful parts of what happened. 
passion of the Christ was already done. I suffered through the pain and tried so hard to only show the beauty. And that's why I wanted to do Passion of the Christ 2. The sequel. The resurrection is what matters. Not, not his death. If somebody blew five holes into the skull of the person you love the most in the world, would you want those pictures on billboards and necklaces all over the place? No. You want the good stuff. So, to send a very clear message to the people who trashed all of the sacred items that I blessed, anointed, prayed over, and delivered, for the men who urinated in my rock star cans and uh, tried to shut us down, you almost did, but not quite. So this is my gift to you, a beautiful specimen cup. I even decorated it. And on that red heart, you can write your name. I'm not putting anything in it. I'm just going to leave it for someone to pick up and put in the garbage can. because. Some people threw Lady Gaga in a garbage can one time. Stephanie. That precious, precious girl. Can you imagine having people throw you into a garbage can? And God saw what they did to that little girl. And he said no. It's not going to end like this. I identify with her on one major level, and that is that without creativity running through my veins, I have nothing. And my time to shine is around the corner. I'm just going to wait patiently, because the longer I wait, and the more people I reach, the faster you guys are going to get home. And that is the truth. The other gift that I'm leaving is this. It's a cool little lion. Absolutely adorable. So I'm leaving two choices. You guys can urinate here and have people take your blood because they want to see if you're nuts or not and you don't have a choice. Or can chill out and just hang at the zoo. Women, children, animals, beatitudes. That's why I'm here. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was enlightening and remember wherever you go, there you are.